Hi everyone, grab a cuppa and let's have a little chat about November favorites. November was quite a month for me, so that was my birthday. I've received this amazing, amazing crystal balls from, I'm not crystal, Tibetan balls from my uh, dear friend and I'm enjoying the sound of these balls every, every day. Uh, you know that I love sound healing and I want to incorporate sound into my readings more, into my healing practice. So having this amazing antique balls uh, as a gift, it was, you know, just wow. So that was one of the top favorites of mine this month. Uh, I also got for my birthday um, this awesome like chalice well essences from another dear friend. They actually come straight from Glastonbury. They made with, you know, Glastonbury water and from the chalice well. And I haven't opened this one yet, Star Magnolia, it's for connection. But I'm taking, I started taking um, like a few days ago, maybe a week ago, um, this Trinity of Holy Thorn. Um, it's about transformation and it's from the beautiful, um, you know, the tree. Um, what is it? The uh, the Hawthorn tree. And they, they grow in, in Glastonbury, right? There's these beautiful ones that blossom in December too. And I have to say that uh, obviously, you know, they flower essences, so you don't like usually feel like full of knockout. But I was hoping, I was hoping, I was thinking that this one is going to be like um, rougher. But it feels like beautifully supporting the transformation actually makes me calmer and... You know, whenever I take it, I'm just feeling like, oh my God, I'm taking in the vibration of that amazing place. Uh, and so, yeah, this this holy, um, the chalice well essences, I'm really excited to be checking out more, uh, you know, how they work for me and uh, what's, uh, what's going to, you know, how they're going to support me during this time of transformation. And this is the chalice well essences. So there are different ones. This is cleansing for cherry blossom, nourishment, connection, alignment, transformation, um, wisdom, self-revelation, joy with this golden rose and unity for healers. So that's something that sh if you live maybe in the UK or if you're interested in essences you can check it out um charlie swell essences so that was another thing that really uh kind of i found exciting uh, and i am excited to work with another one that i actually got for myself for my birthday is this um honeycomb collective uh, planner for 2020 and what's interesting about this one is that it's uh, personalized so it's a you have to be an astrologer or know about transits to use this one but i am an astrologer so hoo -hoo, lucky me so this is as you can see it says kasha and it has my sun moon and ascendant so you send them your birthday details and they actually let me just see if we can see it a bit better they actually um you know bring in the your your details your deeds and they create all the like they create the graphs of what transits are happening next year but for you you know so they personalize transits so you've got all the new moons and full moons of of the next year and um and you've got this kind of outer planet transit so it shows on red when they the mostly active in your life again not just for you know whatever and then you have it monthly so in month of january you've got the glyph like so saturn for example i mean uranus will be squaring saturn for me and especially the beginning of the year it's going to be you know uh, very active and then you have this kind of uh, like um you know the this uh, the month in in one go and then you have month by the day with all the transits that are happening on that day for you 
which I find it's it's really really cool so um, that's what I wanted to show you because I was excited about it when I found um, found out that they do something like this and you can personalize your uh, your astrological planner which is really a great idea at the end you also have um, the ephemeris for uh, 2020 so for anyone who uses astrology uh, check out the honeycomb collective and they print it out I, um, I ordered from Europe but they also deliver from Europe but they in the States so yeah take a look at this so this definitely was a favorite um, what else did we have? I actually got really, so I'm reading this Sharon Blackie's If Woman Rose Rooted. Um, I also received this Martin Prechter's book, The Smell of Rain on Dust. Haven't started reading it yet, but I'm really into this um, subject on grief and, you know, death and uh, finding your roots and really kind of you know authentic belonging so what i did also which i found um was inspiring and it's going to be still inspiring because i'm still doing it i went to the library because i didn't want to buy anything you know and i borrowed like polish fairy tales which i want to kind of read and discover more i got some you know uh, some of them on audio as well and i took out anderson's fairy tales and Grimm's fairy tales and i reread my favorite fairy tale that i used to love a lot which was the uh, little mermaid that was my favorite fairy tale and i was reading it and i was thinking oh my god like i had to be a weird child this is the fairy tale without a happy ending like the little mermaid loses her tail she gains legs she the bad witch cuts off her tongue she can't speak the prince doesn't Fall, fell in, didn't fall in love with her as much as he should have for her to gain you know that soul and then she's dying and changing into the foam but she's actually not dying because then she's going into the daughters of the air and she's there to like help people and it's like a death uh, like a death fairy tale <laughs> and i'm going like i love death you know i'm interested in death but wow if you guys have this christian and uh, christian anderson's books check out the little mermaid and think of me when you read it <laughs> so let's move to the decks so my favorite decks um this month obviously there were a lot but i'm just going to show you the ones that i used a lot and that really made me kind of go and think about stuff so obviously a mistress of mother mary deck I, I just love this deck and I'm constantly learning from this deck. I'm constantly working with it. I'm pulling one card. Sometimes it sits on my altar for a week, sometimes for a month, sometimes for two weeks, sometimes for two days. Uh, right now we are doing 12 days with Mary and it's um, the Feast of Mary of Guadalupe. It's coming on 12th of December. So we started on the 1st of December and Hetien from the French Madonna. She's running it on Patreon, but also for free on Instagram and on um, on her blog. So you can sign up and check 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 this out if you're interested. So um, yeah, I've been working with this deck a lot, and it's a journey. It's really a journey that Mary took me on last year, but specifically this year. And I've got this Pluto square Moon and Venus, and seriously, that brought up all this amazing transformation of sacred feminine wisdom discovering so much this year i've met so many amazing women who like you know inspired me and are supporting this work and yeah i'm very grateful so the next thing is the star of the holy light and this is quite a new it also was a gift for uh, for my birthday for christmas <laughs> for everything this year but i haven't expected this book to be that good um i knew it was supposed to be really good but i never had it and i am lear learning so much and you know i know tarot but this approach is different it's different to golden dawn it's so much stuff packed into it it's quite a heavy read for um anyone to, who expects like you know the fluffy info no it's full-on like kind of academic read but for people who like this and who want to like dig deeper 
I really highly recommend this book. It's so incredible. Um, I'm actually, because it's so deep and it's so different and it's so in tune with the sacred feminine work that I'm doing. Um, this is the deck that um that I have. So that's by Christina Payne, Howler and Michael Dowers. And, you know, this is this linen kind of um, version and it's amazing. And I'm actually, because it's so full on, as you can see, it's so much to know about each and one of these cards. Um, it's astrological, it's alchemical, it's um, traditional, it's Jungian, it's Alche yeah, alchemical, I said, like, it's just mix of everything. So I'm actually, like, pulling one card, sometimes for two days, for three days. And first of all, I'm reading about it from this book. And I'm figuring out w if I understand, because sometimes I have to read twice through this text to really get what she means. And sometimes even when I read five times, I still, some things I don't get. But it, I love that, you know, it just it challenges my brain. So it's funny that we speak about this mercurial quality because that's, you know, this air element um, just represented through the magus. But maybe I show you just a little, um, if we go to the magus, just so you can see. So she gives the different letter, Aleph, the first letter to number one to the magus and i really like that uh, qualities breast breath chest respiration tongue of balance and then she says the magus represents the imagination side of one's genius and uniqueness this is the communicating intelligence Gichtel's life spirits which employs planetary cycles to knit our random experiences into a coherent narrative of the self Around him shimmers the energetic architecture of the higher planes towards which he is constantly striving. In the Sophianic, so Sophia, right, mysteries, this is the scribe or aspirant to initiation who is coming awake to his true nature and seeks a path to return. He could also be viewed as the Christos, half male, male half of the Christ Sophia pair who are each sent to redeem the world at different stages of the cosmic drama. We take this emanation of pure awareness as the first premise of our Trump sequence. And it goes on, this amazing, incredible um, exploration of the alchemical, uh, philosophical, uh, anthropological, astrological, astronomical levels of the magus i've learned so much about the devil i mentioned this before that um i'm really excited about this book and i haven't even um known that i'm going to enjoy it so much so i highly recommend this book to anyone who wants to learn more and you know kind of challenge yourself a little bit more when you're kind of bit in a rat because we know everything now about Taro. <laughs> so another favorite of mine is this Folarcos, uh, Folarcos Taro by Carmen Sorrenti. And guys, I have just recorded the interview for Inspired Tarot Map with Carmen. And oh my God, we hit it off with Carmen. She is incredible. I think the interview is so interesting. We're discussing certain cards. She tells us uh, exactly what she wanted it to be, you know, uh, or not even wanted it to be, what she, her, her kind of uh, position, what she thinks about the cards. But she also mentions how important it is that you connect to the images yourself. So this Polarkos deck is so amazing i love this deck so much i've done a review of it but in the interview i'm asking carmen about why she structured it like this why are the trails black and white why are the aces you know uh, blindfolded why are the tens all with opened eyes um we speak about different worlds that she included in the deck we speak about valley myers and about um, carmen's 
uh, you know, upbringing and where she, what she's interested in and what she studied. And she's amazing, such an inspiring person. So Volarkos Taro not only is uh, one of my favorite decks of the se- uh, November, and I'm sure it will be in December as well, but also it's an incredible um, deck to use for dream work. And Carmen also is doing with Wasima from a session wave, on session waves. She's doing the the dream uh, workshop uh, in January. I signed up for it. So if anyone wants to do it, just check it out. It's I think thirty dollars, so <clears throat> affordable. And yeah, I'm I'm waiting. I'm curious what's going to to happen with this. So this deck for Larkos Tarot is amazing. I really really love it. Um, another deck that I loved in November is this little deck of character. I just used it in most of my readings at the end uh, for the client. So whoever got a reading with me in um, in November, you know, would have probably this deck uh, featured uh, at the end of the reading. And I want to just do one collective reading for us for... Let's do one for the shift of the years. Like, what's the best character for us to be playing then? So end of 2019, what tool our character needs for this shift? And what place would be, you know, the best place for our character to play with his tool or her tool? All right, are you guys ready? Watchdog. Hmm. Watchdog. So this is like be aware, right? The key and the place, Inferno. Oh, so you guys take a look at what you're thinking. <clears throat> but what's interesting, you can also go into the deck of character and dot com, and there are little kind of there's a little help of, um, you know, like translation and interpretation of the cards. So if we let's just do this Inferno because. I'm not quite sure. Is it like hell? <laughs> the deck of character. Let's take a look at this card meanings. So when you go to the website, you find something like this. And then we go into the places and it's alphabetically sorted. So we go into uh, Inferno. So it's mass destruction. Oh, fuck. The part of the creative process where you just need to clear the way, passion, heat, a goddess of destruction, major demons, a plight of the warrior, vengeance, standing up for your morals. Hmm. So I think maybe to avoid the mass destruction that we might be seeing, like we've got to be careful and watch your instincts and the key to kind of um, surviving that. I think is awareness and if we go into the watchdog so we get out of the places and we <clears throat> see the character and our character is the watchdog it says something new coming into your life integrity protector so the key to be protected from this um yeah, it's some form of watchdog is also white and blight, bla, white, black and white morality, high alert, empowerment, standing strong, inner strength, on the lookout, boundaries, integrity. So the key to surviving the inferno is integrity and being aware and something new coming into our lives. But you know, we need to maybe protect it. Hmm, it's pretty full on. <laughs> was supposed to be fun. And what happened? Yeah, there you go. So that's what a little deck of character uh, bring, brings us. Um, sometimes it's fun and sometimes it's fun through. Ha ha ha, not too funny. But I love this deck. I really, really, really love it. Another favorite of mine was the Forest of Precious Tweaks uh, and the We Star Oracle. I did mix both of them. I did a review of both of them. And uh, this is such a beautiful, soulful deck. Maybe let's pull one cut for the <coughs> traumatic deck of character reading. 
and see maybe there will be an advice for us for the shifts of the years okay and we got this type of like veiled um to me she can be Mary right but it's a veiled feminine and it's about awareness so a little bit like the dog watch or watchdog the magical place of remembering that we exist in two worlds the one without and the one within and maybe that's the key to you know kind of going through this fire initiation that we all kind of heading into like really um, protect and be aware of the bigger cycles that are happening for us. So Forest of Precious Twigs and the Wistar Oracle, really beautiful, beautiful decks. I also, of course, wouldn't be me if I didn't um, uh, use the, you know, Oracle of Initiation. I think I use this deck definitely in every reading, but also for myself, this deck is my soul deck i love love this deck by melissa lucia you can watch two interviews i've done with melissa <coughs> you can watch um my reviews of this deck uh, i also am learning about runes and i took lala lara veleda vesta so this is telluric runes by lunaria gold beautiful deck when she combines minerals and plants so i'm pulling just like one card uh, for a week and i watch you know and i listen and i see the shape and what does it remind me of and i watch the plant and kind of you know is this like belly or is it a head or is you know i make some associations and um that's how i'm learning for now i still don't even know all the rune names and all the symbols so i'm in the beginning of this trip but it's interesting and i'm glad this deck was made because i really dig the artwork another deck that i find very very cool is this um archetype deck uh, by kim kranz and <clears throat> I didn't even, even want to get it, but a lot of my friends said, Kasia, you will like it. And I actually really do like it. And it's not even that I'm so crazy about the artwork or I was thinking, you know, do I really need another archetypal deck or I have the Caroline Myers archetypes. I was using Tarot's archetypes, so do I need the specific one? Um, but in the end, this deck won and I got it for my birthday from another friend. And I have to say that I'm uh, impressed with the depth of this deck and with um, just the connectivity that it brings into the reading. It just seems to be like spot on every time. Maybe that's the archetypal readings. That's how they are. It also reminded me that I used to offer archetypal readings years ago when I still was not even tarot map then I was offering them thrones of transformation and maybe I'll get back in 2020 to do readings like this it was an interesting combination of astrology and um, archetypes then but yeah this uh, Kim Kranz deck with the book and um, this little archetype guidebook I shouldn't call it little because it is little but it has so many um so much interesting information and um, I love reading this whatever she put through she really went through some uh, deep you know deep journey with the archetype so I love this deck and then there is this new deck that I got uh, from my dear friend she said like I have to have it um, it's this abyssal tarot and it's like one of those sexy decks um, and sensual. It's by Shelley Corbett. It's a photograph photography deck. Um, it's got nudity. I never really warn about nudity because I'm thinking like, hello, like we humans, we are nudes. That's our bodies. But I can warn about this deck because even though it's not full on um, just nudes, it can be attached... Um, dramatic and maybe even traumatic for some people depends if you ever were you know if there were some sexual abuses and stuff like card like this can be quite evocative maybe so it has different cards but uh, some of them are more romantic but uh, for example the swords like oh this one i don't know it just bothers me so it's one of those decks that really makes me go like oh 
cringy. Um, they were taking take the pictures were taken underwater, you know. So what she did, she did this underwater photography. And she just mixed it uh, with this kind of, it looks like painting. And she added the colors. Um, there is some violent uh, cards as well. Um, there is some beautiful, you know, kind of peaceful ones. The sword elements are very, like, um, much more uh, violent, I would say, for the lack of better word. It's sensual, it can be sexual, it can be <clears throat> challenging. Uh, so it's really depending, I think, on the personal um, appreciation of art and maybe on personal experiences, how well this deck can be worked with. It can be used for feel, uh, for healing, but it also can be very like evocative. So sometimes if people are not ready, it might be too much. Um, so can be a great shadow deck, can be a great deck for emotional work. But I wanted to show you some of these um, sword cards. So this is the King of Swords. Um, There's just something like Knight of Swords. King of Pentacles. That's quite full on, right? It's the Three of Swords. Mm. So, yeah, but it's a fascinating deck. That's a Hierophant. Oh, yeah, I dig that. Um, so, how beautiful Nine of Pentacles. I got some really interesting readings with this deck, but I was asking about, like, Sacred Feminine. That's what I got, actually. Uh, I can't remember the third card, but I got this one. That it was veiled, it was conquered, it was like, you know... <clears throat> The masculine, in a way, the unhealthy masculine, like, went all over it. And then it's kind of, re like, it's like Persephone coming out, like, got, it gets back its power. But I can't remember the third card, but I have it on Instagram. So this is the, yeah, the Abyssal Tarot. So it's an interesting deck. And it was... um yeah, it's still, you know, a deck that I'm going to be exploring in December. Uh, it only came at the end of November, but it's one of those decks that I wanted to mention because it's such an untypical, different, um, different deck. And I've been using also a lot of uh, these decks for readings. So the Lavish Earth Oracle for crystals, <clears throat> Sacred Creators Oracle, and also invoking the Goddess Oracle in action by Lisa de San Crua. And maybe I'm going to finish this video by pulling one of these goddesses for us as an inspiration and I'm going to maybe play the ball so okay so this is the goddess I pulled for us and this is goddess bust and it's about celebration perfect <clears throat> Make a celebration in gratitude for the gifts in your life. Honor the goddess in Reverly. So be grateful for the gifts in your life. And each of us has a lot of gifts to be grateful for. Shake those rattles, dance and drink. Raise your skirts, celebrate. I am the cat-headed goddess Bast. Light-hearted and free. I bring friendship and play, give comfort and support. Domestic goddess, I protect your home, children and women's mysteries. So beautiful Bast uh, for celebration. It's this time of the year also. So I wish you a beautiful celebrative end of the year. We will be still in touch. I will be still recording, but that's what Bast wanted to share with us so thank you everyone for watching i hope you enjoyed that um november favorite video and yeah i wish you all the best and i speak to you soon bye